Welcome to another edition of Vigorously with me, Val Klein Hands. It's getting pretty colorful in here because Chantel Living Colorfully is in the building. Woo! We are so excited to have you, Chantel. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me on here. I have so many questions. We, Instagram is what brought us together. But I, first question I had, because I don't think I asked you this last time we chatted. I remember that you mentioned you were ba- you're based in Australia now, but you came from the UK. What sparked the move? What, what was that about? Yeah, so we were actually based in Norwich um, at the time. COVID sort of hit um, and it kind of gave me this realization like, what have I done with my life? I haven't really traveled. I don't know what to do. Um, I need to do something. I need to see the world. And so an opportunity came up to me to Australia. Um, I've never been to Australia, by the way. Never. Like, so I didn't know what to expect. So for someone who's like, like, I, I would say I've traveled a bit, but not a lot. Um, and I've always been like a homebody. So this is totally out of my comfort zone. Totally. So... Yeah, we just jumped at the opportunity to just move um, literally across the world. Um, and it was sort of, I guess, what sparked it is, I guess, change. I wanted some sort of change in my life. I wanted COVID really kind of, I, I think it hit a lot of us. And it was kind of a wake up call, like, I need to be more with my life. I need to be more of the world. Um, and Australia, the chance came up. So yeah, I've jumped at the chance. And now it is four years since I've been living in Australia. So So yeah. you've fallen in love with it since. And that's why you oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, at, at first like it was just culture shock. Like, you know, things there's different things. Um in Interesting. The UK. Yeah. Some like there's there's a lot of similarities, but there is difference like in sort of it sounds silly, but like shops, grocery stores, like totally different, totally different. Are they um, really? Because th- these American ears want to hear this difference because all of y'all have the best accents. I don't care if it's UK or Australia. We just hear awesome accents and we immediately think that you're more intelligent than us, no matter what you oh. say. Like <laughs> that's the American perspective is that. So what, there's so there's differences or subtle differences, maybe anyway, between UK and Australia. What are those? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the accents aren't the same. I wouldn't say no. the same. I would say like the Australia is a lot more chill. Um, they're a lot more chill here. I feel like in the UK, you're basically working to live constantly. Work, mm. work, 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 work. Whereas here, it's kind of a lot more chill. Um, you know, weekends are basically family time. It's just a lot more chill, I guess, because um the sunshine, we have a lot of sunshine here. Okay. So I think part of it is to do with it's sunny most of the year. Um, well, in, in, in Brisbane it is. So people are just a, a lot more chill. They, you know, I don't know. I can't really explain it. But there's, there's one sort of difference. Um, and the other differences are kind of like grocery stores. So I'm used to like Pesco, Esca, um, all these grocery stores in the UK, uh-huh. which like offer so many different varieties of food. Um, and here they just have like a couple of varieties of food. And it's, oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> Whereas when I visited the US, the US is more like the UK like there's a lot there's a we lot have a lot of, of like, yeah variety. yeah we have a lot of variety and I wonder if the situation is different in Australia just because it is further out and the logistics so. behind that make <clears throat> make it harder to import things to provide that variety I wonder yeah. that I think it's that I think it's that but it's interesting it's 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 yeah I mean it is definitely a lot more chill over here and I'm so thankful for that because I come from a background where I was always working, well, I would say nine to five. It was more, it was more like, you know, a, a 40 hour week um, and it was different yeah. hours. And it was constant, like working in London, you know, you're just working to live. Whereas here, you actually, you work, but you actually have like disposable income. Um, that might not be for everyone, but that is kind of how I've experienced it. So yeah. yeah, it's interesting. 
That's beautiful. And I have to ask because you mentioned the sunshine and because we know you on Instagram as color queen, fabulous rainbow vibes are where we're at. Thank you. Is uh, it's beautiful. That's one of the reasons I hit follow. I was like, this is so incredibly interesting. Like Lydia Dietz reincarnated wearing fucking black and, you know, animal print all the time. Like it, for my eyes, it was like something different. Follow. What is this about? So did the sunshine inspired that change in your wardrobe or maybe you were like that well before you even came to Australia give me the beginning uh, yeah. on that part so I would say well before I came to Australia I was I was like into color I would say it sort of happened I would say late teens um I really struggled with style all like up until 18 I struggled with my style you're I lying know, I can't <laughs> ever picture that version of you <clears throat> I just didn't know how to style myself. I didn't. I didn't know color and what colors like suited me and everything. Um. So I just remember. I actually I followed a few Instagrammers mm. in my twenties. Um, and then I was like, "Hang on, I can dress like how I want to dress. Why am I just dressing right. like in fashion magazines?" I feel like. The media and fashion magazines kind of, I felt like I should be dressing like that. Like, that's what I should be doing. Um, but when I um, joined it through social media, like Instagram, I got more, like, inspiration. I was like, who are these people? Like, who are, I love that. are wearing amazing clothes. Um, so that's where the inspiration come from. And then I guess from there on I just kind of was like that's it I'm setting up my own page I'm gonna <laughs> wear what I what I bloody want and no one's gonna tell me like you know you can't wear this so it's it kind of I would say definitely before I came to Australia there's always been a love for color I just yeah. didn't know how to style um but now I mean some people will probably dislike an outfit I'm wearing but that's fine because I feel comfortable wearing it Period. Whoa. Period. That's all that matters. That's all yeah. that matters. And I'm so glad that you found inspiration through other girlies sort of doing the same thing. You're looking at them and you're like, oh, I already had, it was already in me, but it's like, ah, it's yeah. this major aha moment. I've had that too with the, with the more like alternative world. You know, I miss, you know, classic American, like blue jeans and band shirt. Like I did that for years growing yeah. up and, and that's great and that's fine. And nine times out of 10, that's what you'll catch me in. But yeah. You can do it in different ways with different prints, with different pants, with different fabrics and play, and you can still yeah. give it some edge. And I'm just like, that's one of my favorite parts about Instagram is that inspiration that you're talking about. So your social media journey, I mean, is that, is that what inspired really for you to get on yourself from, from okay. being inspired by other people? I, yeah, I, that was one big part of it. I actually started off as a photographer. So I graduated mm. university and I was going to these um, sort of content creator events um, and it was kind of like an event photographer for them. And I was like, okay. oh, hang on. Like, this is pretty cool. Like, um, I got to meet, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I got to meet like so many content creators. And I was like, what, what's this about? Like, people get to sort of wear clothes and go to these events and, I just, I don't know, like, feel amazing. So it's like, okay, this sounds really like my sort of type of thing to do. Um, I then set up uh, Instagram. I wanted to actually start a YouTube page, but I was like, oh, I don't know. that's a bit too, too much It's harder. Uh, it's, it's harder. harder. Video yeah. is harder. In my opinion, video is harder to work with than photography yeah. or even audio like we're doing right yeah. now. It's, it's a whole other world. <laughs> it is. And so I'm glad I didn't like go down that route. I just was like, yeah, I'm going to set up a page and see how it goes. It was a fashion page. Um, it started off as a fashion page. I've always had a thing for colorful clothes. So I was like, let's just go down that route. And then I think it just really spiked during COVID. I did a lot of um, sort of creative posts during COVID. My feed was like so bright. It was so bright. Um, and then that's where it spiked. I got like loads of people following me, loads of people I've connected with um, since. And I just built this community full of people supporting one another and people who love colors and everything. So, yeah, I guess COVID kind of helped, but like 
helped me in a way because I'd always wanted to set it up, but I needed a push. I needed like to be pushed into doing something out of my comfort zone. And that's like, I'm so grateful in a way um, yeah. that I had that kick. I needed it. Um, so yeah, it, yeah, it's definitely interesting, isn't it? When you kind of look back and think that was such a hard time, but like on top of that, it was a really good time. Like, yeah. You turned it into a positive. And so, some of us were able to do that. Some of us, you know, were, are still struggling. But in your case, yeah. it sounds like you turned that whole experience into a positive. Yeah. I'd like to take a moment and learn from you on something. Just because I've never had the opportunity to ask someone who would know firsthand. In addition to being a content creator, you're also creating UGC for brands. Yeah. Let's talk about that because... What, teach me i'm completely open what is ugc it's a buzzword that we're seeing now what does that mean what type of content is that walk me through that part of your life so ugc is um user generated content so when i first saw this i was confused i was like oh i'm really that's what is this that isn't just posting on instagram Um, yeah and my question was is that not content creation already like is it not literally like is that not literally what content creation essentially is if you look at the actual dictionary definitions of those words in yeah. a sentence so, so that's why i threw it yeah it is content creation however it's content creation for a brand um and what it is is these brands will use it on advertising um mm. so it's more of like you don't post it on your social media pages um i actually have two separate pages which is so confusing, so confusing to that. I kind of, I kind of let one slide down. I'm like, oh, it's too, it's too much to post on both pages. But occasionally I'll post on both pages. Um, but yeah, so I'm actually creating content for a few brands um, right now. Can't mention these things. Um, it's a surprise, but um, okay. they're going to be paid on like it's going to be paid. It's going to be paid advertising essentially. So. They okay. just basically put it out. So it's more, UGC is more basically paid advertising. Um, yeah, which is interesting because I, I see, I do see a lot of people saying, oh, we well, UGC career, but I'm like, oh, do, do we actually all know what that means? Or is, this, is it just a thing that we just, yeah, no, I would because just go with? That separate, that definition, perfect. That separated for me in my head. Now I have an yeah. understanding that, Okay, it's not necessarily something you would put on your own Instagram page. You're almost like a hired contractor for somebody, yeah. for for some for a for a brand, and they want you to do something specific. You just have the skills and know how to make that happen, so they hire you. That's yeah. my understanding yeah. now. Okay, perfect. Now I now I get it. Now I've learned. What has that <laughs> journey been like for you? Yeah, do you know it's been a journey. Um, I first. I, I mean, at first I decided, uh, well, I decided to sort of quit my job, my full-time job. Mm. I was like, yeah, I'm going to quit it. I'm going to go into this. Um, I was very blindsided. I kind of thought that I was going to get like any sort of, any sort of freelance sort of yeah. gig coming up. Um, and it's not like that. It is, I'm going to be crystal here. It's, you know, it's, it's full on. It, it can be full on. You can't get a, you can't find a freelance job every day. Um, the income is it's up and down. So yeah, it it depends on what you know what brand wants what. But I find nowadays you 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 know you're probably going to up against like fifty to hundred people at least mm. for a, for like a specific you know a job. So it's kind of like you've got to stand out a bit, you know, you kind of have to pitch yourself. Um, like any other job. Well, yeah, like any other job. Um, and it, it is interesting. Like, I do love it. The income is very up and down, though. Up and down. It's and there's a lot of work. Yeah. You can't count that's on the, it. Okay. That's the word. That's a really good word. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into it. So whenever I say to someone, oh, like, I'm a UGC creator. They kind of like, oh, that's a really chilled out role to have for job. And I'm like, it's really not. It's really not. It's <laughs> I worry really about not. everything. 
Yeah, literally deadlines, um, you know, camera equipment bre- breaking, you know, voiceovers, script and pitching. There's like everything goes into it. It has to be perfect. And it, it, it can be a lot. It can be a lot. Yeah. When did color, I think the question that I, the better question to ask, why is color so important to you? And I'm glad that you're able to bring it into your content creation life on both sides of it too. Why is color so important to you? Well, you know, I would say, I I thought of this before, I thought in my head, like, why, why do I love color so much? Like my whole house is like a rainbow, by the way. Um, but I, part of the reason is because it really uplifts me. So if I get up in the morning in a shitty mood, I automatically walk in my kitchen, make my coffee. I look around my house and I'm like, this is like amazing. Like I literally, <laughs> yes. it's so amazing. Like this is, it's like having a Barbie dream ho- um, house. Like literally <laughs> I walk in and I just take one look at my home and I'm like, I have like designed this. This is, yeah. This I is what I yeah. wanted. This is what I wanted. Um, So yeah, interior wise, it's just, I guess, well, I guess it just uplifts me. That to, to your question, I guess it just really uplifts me, up, uplifts my mood. It mm-hmm. makes me feel confident. I, I struggled a lot with confidence before. Um, and when I'm wearing like a colourful outfit um, like today, I automatically feel like just so chill, so confident, and just really good about myself, like wearing it. And it's a mood booster. Like whenever I go out and I have a coffee, I always get a compliment on my outfit. There'll always be someone saying like, wow, like what an amazing outfit. Like, which yes. is just amazing to hear. So yeah, it's definitely a mood booster. It definitely helps me kickstart my morning. I'm a mom, so I'm always tired. Um, so it always just helps just looking around and at my home and just thinking, wow, this is just, amazing it's beautiful you can put an outfit together let's go like uh, it's Thank it's you. a beautiful thing to see it's and what you're talking about is and i know you've posted about this before i know you're well aware of the term dopamine dressing that feeling yeah. that's it that's literally the epitome of what dopamine dressing is putting yeah. on clothes for no one who has heard this for, for someone who hasn't heard this term before that's it, you could speak to it better than i could probably but it's putting on whatever you feel good in is that fair yeah. it's a simple assessment yeah perfect that's yeah and that's what it's about it's it's what makes you feel comfortable and what makes you feel amazing like i mean i woke up this morning and straight away I went for this I went for this I was like this is what's going to make me feel really good about myself today and it's, it's you know I do feel like I want to inspire people to wear what they want you know even if even if they think oh you know a, a person on the street isn't going to like it just wear it because it, it's what makes you feel you and it's what makes you feel comfortable yeah who's that person on the street anyway we don't know them we don't have time yeah. for them we don't know that. Bye. bye. Yeah. Boy, bye. Boy, bye. Especially, ooh, especially dressing for men. <gasps> yeah, I've heard that um, before. Yeah. Oh, I've heard that before. More so when I was younger, because we're trying to attract a man. Like women, all, every woman, heterosexual woman has been through that before. They're just like, yeah. I need to get a man. I need my dress. I need blah, 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 blah. And it's like, sis, there's going to be yeah. a day when you may be in a hospital gown and that's what he has to look at. Like, honestly, it's really, exactly. there's more to life than that. Do you, do you, yeah. that, you're a mom too. Like, uh, do you have a, a son or a daughter? I have a son. So I have a two and a half year old um, and I actually dress up him in color. Like he's completely dressed in color. So whenever uh-huh. um, we go out, everyone says, where's that outfit from? And I'm like, yeah it's 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 amazing because I feel like there's been like there's there's been this thing where where people sort of say oh you know boys should be wearing blue and I'm like no like it's does he choose what he wants he chooses yeah he's at the age now where he actually physically goes into his wardrobe and he chooses like what what outfit he wants which is so awesome it's so awesome I mean, there is a lot of colour in there. Like, not, not he's not wearing colour every day. Um, 
but I have got some pretty cool outfits in there for him where he's just like, yeah, he loves, and we try to match, we try and match, um, which is which is amazing. But yeah, I do feel like there needs to be more kids' clothes out there that, you know, colourful kids' clothes as well as adult oh. clothes because I feel like, yeah, I feel like Talk the to boys me. as well. Yeah, well, talk to me about that because I'm not a parent, so I'm not really shopping in that section. But is when you shop in the kids' areas, is it pretty much those gender norms? All you're seeing is blue and pink. It's really interesting because in the UK, there's more there's more outfits out there for like colorful boy, like colorful boys clothes. There's a lot in the UK, um, and a lot of brands that offer it. Whereas over here, it's only only just becoming a thing. Um, mm-hmm. And it's not with the big brands, which is really interesting. Um, normally it's like, you know, beige outfits or, you know, you've got your blues and your dark colours, which is really interesting to see um, coming from the UK where, like, the, there's a lot of brands that offer a lot of colour for both girls and boys. Um, it's interesting. It's interesting. Um, but, yeah, I do try and shop a colourful wardrobe for my little one. I really do. <laughs> so you see that well, changing that, then that's yeah, a good thing I do I do see that change um since we've made here there's been a lot of brands that are now coming and offering colorful clothes which is amazing I do think that we need more of it we do need more and I have sat there to, and thought to myself maybe that's something that I would love to do myself um just to design colorful clothes for kids <laughs> but <laughs> Listen, if you design, I'm signing up. Take all my money, please. I will I will do it. I will pay those ridiculous shipping costs to from Australia to the US. I don't care. Like you you have a knack, I'm telling you. If you if no person before, they need to be there. Well, I'm glad to hear that mom life is fantastic. So are you instilling in him um just just the idea that it's okay for him to choose what he wants when it comes to fashion experiment a little bit if he wants to yeah definitely it's really funny actually um i got um i've been sent this really colorful bag um, and we've got opening opening like the package together this morning and straight away he just took it and just wanted to walk around with this colorful bag (laughs) if you want to walk around with a colorful bag you can totally do it so i am sort of I am just like at that point where I'm like, you you wear what you want. Um, you take what you want. If you want to wear like a purple, you know, purple dress, or I mean, we don't have any dresses for him, but he occasionally um takes my sort of strawberry dress. I've got this strawberry dress. Um, uh, and he, he likes it. My wardrobe, yeah. And it's like one day you might be able to fit into it. Um, but at the <laughs> moment, yes, yeah, you're a little, you're a little bit small. Um, oh, but yeah, he, he he carries it around with him. So I'm like, yeah, if you love it, you you know, you do you you do it. So yeah, he's yeah. Had, it's brilliant though. At that stage, being able to pick the clothes that he wants to you know wear, which is it's yeah, it's lovely to see. That is beautiful. <laughs> Hello, doggy. <laughs> so what's next for you? What's coming? What can we look forward to coming from you? Um. Well. I would like to say I want I want to set up um my own uh, YouTube channel. I really want to set up my own YouTube channel vlogging. Um, it's a huge thing that I I want to do. I yeah, it's just finding the time to do it. Um, and then I'm I'm really wanting to do sort of more. I don't know, colorful sort of th- different sort of content. At the moment, I'm doing fashion. I want to mm-hmm. sort of get into that home, um, mm-hmm. sort of video reel, reels, yeah. But yeah, I don't know what's on the plate, really. To be honest with you, there's a lot of there's a lot of things happening. I'm I'm potentially moving next year, moving state, so we'll see what happens there. Um, but hopefully, more travel content, maybe perhaps. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I, I I always get ask you know are you doing a lot of travel this year so I think maybe some travel content on on my Instagram um and some maybe YouTube stuff as well that'd be cool like how to travel travel colorfully or how to yeah 
that type of yeah. thing. That would be incredible. I can't wait for it all. Chantel, this has been mm-hmm. such a learning experience. Thank you for your time. I cannot wait for more. Thank you so much, Val. Thank you.